Now we will look into frame allocation. How does the system allocate frames to processes? Now, the system has a certain number of frames. So if you have, you know, one gigabyte of memory and you have the page size is one kilobyte, then how many frames do you have? You have one gigabyte divided one kilobyte, and that's a million frames. So that's 10 power 6 frames. So what do you do with these million frames? So how do you divide them among the processes that you have? So this is what we are about to study. Now, the first concept is the minimum number of frames that the system must give to a process. A process this minimum number of frames depends on the architecture. Why? So let's explain this concept. Now when you have a, an instruction like this, multiply uh, memory address 1 by memory address 2 and put the result in memory address 3. Now, how many pages can this an instruction like this potentially reference? So clearly, I have three different memory addresses, two sources and one destination. And each one of them can be in a different page. There's nothing in general. Each one of these can be in a different page. Right? So at least <coughs> if I have an instruction that has three different memory operands, it may access three different pages. But there is also a, a fourth page, which is what? What's the fourth page that may be accessed? What? Operator. <coughs> yeah, the instruction itself. <coughs> so the code itself is in memory. So this could be in a different page. Well, most likely the, the page in which the code will be is going to be different than the page in which the data will be. So I have uh, one page of code and three pages of data. So this instruction can access four pages and it may result in four page faults. But on some architectures, things are even worse for two different reasons. The first reason is big instructions. So some architectures like the IBM 370 architecture has big instruction, instructions that may straddle multiple pages. So it has some instructions that have that are six bytes long and it may straddle two pages. So this is page one, this is page two. And that instruction may be on the boundary, so it's using four bytes in this page and two bytes from another page. So the instruction itself can be, uh, you know, can cross two pages. So even the instruction can, uh, you know, can straddle two pages. And memory operands may require multiple memory accesses, if the memory operand is a pointer, not, uh, not the actual you know, address of the value. So you can have something like, uh, like this. So your memory operand can be address, say, 1100. And address 1100, does not have the actual value. Address 1100 has a pointer to the actual data. So it has another address in it, which could be like address 6620. Uh, <laughs> and address 6620 will have the actual data in it. And that data could be, for example, you know, three, number three. 
So if your operand is a pointer to uh, a pointer to the actual address, then this operand may result in two memory accesses. So this is one memory access and this is another memory access. And each one of these can be in a different page. Okay, so this is what we call indirection. Indirection means using pointers to indirectly uh, to indirectly point to something. So this is, uh, you know, indirect. Uh, this is an indirect operand that is not the actual address of the value, but it's a, the address of a memory location that has a pointer to the actual data. So this is what we mean by indirection. Now if you have multiple levels of indirection, <coughs> an operand can access more, uh, more memory uh, locations and more pages. So with, two level, with, with one level of indirection, you can access two memory locations. With two levels of indirection, you can access three. With three, you can access four, and so forth. Uh, so that's why the number of pages that a single instruction can access depends on the architecture. Okay? And you must give each process at least this number. So in this architecture, if one instruction can access six pages, you cannot give a process less than six pages. You must give it at least six pages. Okay, now how do we do the allocation? Well, first there is fixed allocation. Fixed allocation, well, the first scheme that we will look into is very naive. It's if you have 100 frames and uh, five processes, just give each process 20 frames. So 100 divided by 5, that's 20 frames per process. Now, why isn't this very efficient? Or why, why doesn't this make a lot of sense? Not all processes are equal. Yeah, exactly. Not all processes are uh, equal. Uh, there, there is always a difference between uh, equality and justice. You know, sometimes you know, people get these two concepts mixed. They think that uh, justice is equality. No, it's not, it's not true. Uh, justice is different from equality. And fairness here, if you have a big process, uh, it's not fair to give it the same number of frames as a small process that doesn't need very many frames. And if the system, if the operating system is not fair, then the performance of the system will suffer. Yeah, so this is not a good idea. A better idea is proportional allocation, where um, proportional allocation, where you just, the number of frames given to a process is proportional to its size. And in this case, in this example, uh, you know, you have 62 frames, and you have two processes, one with, that needs, that has a total size of 10, and another that has a total size of 127. <coughs> so, uh, we give the first one 10 over 137 of the total number of frames available, so it will get four, and this process will get 127 over 137 of the 62, that's 57. Okay? So this is proportional, this is uh, equal allocation. So this is like, you know, this is the Senate and this is the House. <laughs> In the Senate, you know, each state gets two representatives. Tiny states get the same number of representatives as California, which has like 40 million people. Some states do not have, have less than a million each. So this is the Senate and this is the House. Uh, oh, now another factor, another important factor is priority allocation. Priority allocation, so it's not only the size that should be taken into account. 
The size is one important factor. Another important factor is the priority of the process. Because when you know, we studied um, CPU scheduling, we looked into the priority of a process, and it makes sense to give more frames to higher priority processes. So what makes more sense is to, uh, to select the number of frames or to divide the frames among processes based on both the size of the process and the priority of the process. So that will make it even more reasonable. Okay. Uh, now, the next issue is uh, should we, how should we do this allocation? I mean, should we just assign a certain number of frames to each process and do the replacement for each process only within its allocated frames? And that's what we call local replacement, where each process has a certain number of frames and the replacement for that process will be within those frames. Or should we have a global pool of frames and make it possible for a process to take frames from other processes or take frames from the global pool of processes, which is effectively taking frames from uh, other processes. So global replacement versus local replacement. Now each one has advantages and disadvantages. Uh, with global replacement, you do a better utilization of the frames. Because if you assign a certain number of frames to each process, and one process is just not utilizing all of its frames. So if you give it 20, and it, doesn't, it, it never needs more than 10, then you are basically wasting these frames or underutilizing these frames. While if you make it global replacement, you will do a better utilization of the frames. Uh, however, you know, the price that you pay in global replacement is that uh, the execution time of the process will be dependent on which other processes are running with it. But this is not a, uh, you know, this is not a big issue because processes compete for resources anyway. So frames are not the only resources that processes compete for. Processes compete for other resources, like the CPU, for example. So mm -hmm. it's, it's unavoidable. So the, the, you cannot avoid uh, this competition between processes or among processes for resources. Uh, if, if you run your process with more other processes competing with it, you expect it to run slower than if you run it with fewer other processes competing with it. Okay? Uh, so this is local versus global.